Hi there. Welcome to facilitating and demonstrating your growth as a Node.js developer. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, there's a URL you can follow, shorturl.at forward slash UX lowercase HMQ uppercase in case um, you need access to the slides um, in an easy way. Let's get started. So we're going to be talking about um, a couple of areas. We're going to be talking about demand, um, about how to fulfill that demand. Uh, we're going to be talking about the things that we can do uh, to skill up and the things that we can do to verify uh, that we have indeed skilled up. Just a little bit before that, I'll explain who I am. Uh, I've been in uh, programming since a fairly young age. Um, in the last 10 years, I've been doing consulting, technical leadership. Um, I, I have an, I'm the author and a contributor to a number of open source projects, including um, Pino and Zero X. Um, and uh, I'm involved in Fastify a little bit as well. Um, for the last five years, uh, I've been working alongside the Linux Foundation and the OpenJS Foundation, which, when we started this, uh, was actually the Node Foundation. Um, and I'm uh, the technical lead uh, of some of the things I'm going to be talking about and the primary author of them as well. And I'm also the author of the trainings. Um, uh, so that's, that's who I am. Okay. So, demand for talent is high and it just keeps on growing. However, we're at a sort of a place where a lot of people are trying to fulfill that demand, but the demand isn't quite matched to the skill level that a lot of people in the industry are currently at. And what this talk is about is trying to bridge that gap. So JavaScript's very easy. It's the lingua franca um, of the internet. Uh, it's used in Node.js, it's used for IoT. It's used for a bunch of things. And, and if you're doing small, easy things with it, it's fine. Um, but it, it is uh, difficult to master uh, and use at a, a sort of upper intermediate level, let's say. And that extends to Node.js. Um, not in every company, but there is a trend that I've observed um, during my years of consulting uh, where the entry level developers that have been hired uh, don't get as much mentoring as uh, would would be preferred. And part of this is that um, the more senior you, senior you are in an organization, uh, the more limited your time is. Um, the organization is focused on um, meeting the bottom line and and accelerating in the market. So that puts people that are, that are sort of at a lower skill level uh, at, a, at a disadvantage because uh, they don't necessarily get the time and space to digest the things that are going on. Um, and they're in an environment that leans towards um, delivery, which is good, um, but with delivery you need quality, and quality in terms of uh, writing code comes from uh, sort of thinking a lot in your own space uh, about how to write code and having interactions with people that have done a lot of that thinking. Um, so there's a overall the, the industry is not um, focused 
on on skilling up developers um, and this has created a sort of a chasm uh, between entry-level developers and intermediate to senior level developers um, people people want to work organizations want to hire and uh, but they will hire people that are at an upper intermediate level to senior level um, more than they will entry level in many cases. Uh, this can lead to uh, another issue that I've observed in the industry, which is uh, developers overselling themselves and they oversell themselves uh, in order to get to get the job. Uh, and then what happens is uh, they struggle to deliver uh, and that turns into essentially a, a personal hell. Um, you, this, that kind of approach can lead to, you know, working way too many hours f for a, what a person should work. Um, so try to avoid doing that because uh, you'll, you'll get yourself into potentially um, hot, hot water. Um, so ideally what we need is we need a way to, to leapfrog this situation. We need a path forward um, that allows for uh, rapid improvement, um, but that's connected to real world scenarios, to real things that you do in, your, in a day job. And then we need to be able to verify that quickly and easily. It would be good if employers could, uh, with a quick check, know uh, that the person they're hiring is uh, capable of delivering for the role that they're hiring for. So there's, a, there's loads of ways to skill up. Um, there's loads of ways to grow. Um, some are harder to verify than others. Um, you need uh, to, to be able to verify someone who's at an intermediate or upper intermediate level. You need at least someone at that same level, preferably higher, to... To, to verify that. And that's quite a difficult qualitative, uh, qualitative um, endeavor. Uh, so when it comes to certifying, um, this, is an, this is an optimization for the industry. Um, and so what we've done is, uh, what myself and, and others that I'll talk about and the organizations involved have done, is created a pathway um, to, uh, to, to skill up and verify that you've skilled up. And this is the path. Uh, so over on the left, uh, there's a training course that I wrote called uh, Introduction to Node.js. Um, this is a, a good sort of overview. It can fill any knowledge gaps. Um, but if you're already fairly familiar, uh, you, you probably don't need to take, you probably don't need to start there. Um, but it's, it's worth checking out um, if you don't use Node uh, all the time, for instance, or you only use it for front-end um, uh, stuff. Uh, then is the Node Services Development Training, which is a training that I wrote to cater to the Node Services Developer Examination and Certification. I suggest doing that one before the Node Application Developer Certification um, because the Services Developer Exam is a broad, uh, a practical kind of focused uh, exam that, 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 that verifies that you can, you can write services with Node, which is uh, quite a common case in, in the industry. Um, the Node.js Application Development Training is a training that I uh, wrote uh, to cater to the Node.js Application Developer certification and that goes more broad uh, and allows you to uh, have a, a fair amount of depth in Node that gives you a flexibility for various other use cases other than building services. So the introduction to Node.js as I said, uh, it's a sort of, uh, it's a good course if you, if you don't use Node every day. Um, it's free, uh, you can optionally uh, pay for a certificate once you've completed it. Um, we go through creating command line interfaces, building mock services, implementing real-time services, and uh, we also talk about understanding and leveraging the Node.js ecosystem. Um, 
This course uses Fastify a fair amount, which is a up and coming web framework um, uh, to, to demonstrate these concepts, but the, the concepts themselves can be applied in to other frameworks, right? Node Services Developer uh, is about training you and certifying you to the upper intermediate level, so between intermediate and senior. So it's not an easy exam, and it is a, a quite a rigorous uh, training regime. Um, but the idea is, if, if you can complete this exam, then you're probably, most likely, uh, able to uh, work every day um, with with uh, creating services that are secure um, in a in a in a production environment. Um, it's designed to establish practical effectiveness. So what what we're trying to what we're trying to show with someone who's gone through the training and the certification for Node Services Developer is that they're they use Node in a practical way for common use cases. Uh, it contains a small amount of involved questions. There's about six questions on there, and they take about between 15 and 30 minutes each to complete. So they are very involved. You're, you're building things, you're putting things together, um, and, then, uh, and then you're submitting that to be, to be marked. It contains two uh, very broad topic domains. Service and services, which make up 70% of the marks on the exam, and security, which make up 30% of the marks on the exam. Security is focused on um, the kind of common mistakes that you could make in a service that, that would uh, cause um, uh, uh, vulnerability. Um, can't say much more than that. But uh, the training will go into more details, obviously. Um, here's a testimonial by uh, Vinicius Musak of SMN Technologies. I very much like the real code, API construction requests, because it reflects our day jobs in our companies. So the reason I chose this testimonial is because it, it reflects what I'm trying to say about the node services uh, developer uh, certification and training and so forth, is that it's, it's really trying to focus on establishing whether you can solve real world problems using a common approach um, or a common art piece of architecture uh, that, that uh, is used a lot. Node application developer um, also trains and certifies to the upper intermediate level. And this is designed to establish overall competency. So it goes through uh, 13 uh, topic domains um, and contains many small questions um, that are five to 10 minutes each. So this is more about uh, can you do individual um, sort of sort of s single case uh, things with Node, and it, and basically it establishes whether you're flexible in in how you use Node. The uh, the exam is uh, library and framework agnostic. You can use anything you like as long as you actually answer the the or you solve the problem that's that's put before you. Uh, the training itself focuses on Node core knowledge and includes a couple of key useful libraries um, for, for um, solving the, the same problems that you would find on the exam. Uh, the, the, the main point of the application developer uh, training and certification is um, to, to uh, sort of help you have key transferable skills that can work in many, many areas when you're working with Node.js. Uh, so this is this is the breakdown of the the domains and the weightings. Um, uh, as you can see, it's a fairly even spread of a lot of things: um, control flow, uh, event system, and buffers and streams uh, tend to take the the most weight, but they're all fairly evenly spread. This is a testimony from Luke Chinworth of Solid Digital. I liked that the questions were directly related to real world tasks. So again, in both exams and in both trainings, we are trying to connect with real world everyday things that you may do. Um, I've, as I say, I've worked in the industry for, for 10 years. Um, 
uh, in terms of actually uh, creating the, the domains and creating the, the questions, I wasn't the only one. Uh, there were others involved who also had a lot of industry experience and our main focus was trying to, uh, um, again, uh, connect the, the exam questions to, uh, to real world scenarios. So these are some of the people that were involved. At the beginning, uh, in 2016, we met in, uh, with some of these people in Austin and uh, we worked together to decide what should be on uh, a Node.js exam. And then over, over time, uh, uh, I continued to, to work with everyone and, and work to, to push things forward. Um, uh, until we were able to, to, to get it out. So these, these people know who they are. If you recognize any of them, send them some love. Um, uh, they're fantastic people. Uh, these are the organizations that have been involved uh, and are involved in um, the, uh, the, the creation and the infrastructure surrounding uh, these exams. Uh, we have Nearform, uh, a consultancy company that uh, is that sponsored me essentially to, to do the technical pieces uh, that, uh, for automated validation software and so forth, and the authoring of the content and actually some reviewing as well. Uh, Node Source, they have a product called NSolid uh, that uh, help with the, the operational side of things and reviewing. The OpenJS Foundation is a certifying body. Um, uh, OpenJS uh, is hosting the, this, this conference at the minute. Um, and uh, they will actually be sending out uh, an email um, uh, on how you can get a, a discount on uh, the training, a 50% discount. Um, PSI are a proctoring body, so when you take the exam, um, there's a human uh, person uh, who uh, watches you take the exam and that you can ask questions and uh, if you have any issues or anything that you can talk through. Uh, TrueAbility uh, ho hosts the actual exam platform. The exam is conducted in uh, a VM. Um, I'm going to uh, show you some other uh, talks to refer to and other materials to refer to um, for going into more details on that. And the Linux Foundation is uh, uh, responsible for vending and coordination. So just a few notes on rigor. Um, the, uh, the training, both the training and the examination, uh, are consistently monitored by myself and updated based on changes in the industry and, um, new versions of node. The exam environment is pinned to the latest LTS version, the latest long-term support version of node, which is currently node 14 in October of this year will be up, upgrading it again. This, is the, this will be the, the uh, second upgrade and the third um, release uh, of the exam. We'll be upgrading it again to Node 16. Um, the prior release that we did in October, uh, updating to, uh, oh, I forget which node, I think it was Node 12. Um, uh, yes, it was. Uh, the, no, sorry, the, the prior release was Node 14, and we updated that so that you can use uh, ECMAScript modules natively. We don't make that the default in the exam because currently in the industry, people aren't using native ECMAScript modules. Um, they're using maybe transpiled and different things, but that's different. So when the industry starts to use them uh, in anger, um, then we'll update the exam so that that's the default instead of requiring module exports. For it, this is an example of how we keep it um, updated. We also uh, conduct fairly frequent psychometric analysis. We have a psychometrician who goes and analyzes the, uh, the how many people are passing and failing individual questions uh, and then uses statistics to uh, measure whether those questions are, are healthy uh, in terms of um, the difficulty level and uh, that we expect it to be and the difficulty level that it appears to be from the, that analysis. And then we uh, adjust based on that. So we're, we're constantly uh, tweaking uh, to, to improve it and have been doing for um, I think two and a half years now. So it's, it's gone into a really 
Um, really great place, place I think. Um, we also do sampled manual marking from time to time uh, to, to, because our marking is actually automated um, to, to check that things are working as we expect. Here's a testimony from Nathaniel uh, Bergwin of uh, Chief Technologist of, Technologist of Booz Allen Hamilton. As a manager, I would feel confident in a candidate who possessed this certification. Obviously, the reason I've chosen that testimonial is to uh, um, support my point uh, or that the whole purpose of the training and the certification is to help uh, people go from one skill level to another skill level and have that skill level easily verified um, using our certification uh, badges that can go through a verification process um, uh, so that so that when people are hiring they can they can make informed decisions um, I'm going to read it one more time as a manager, I would feel confident in a candidate who possessed this certification. Here's some resources. Uh, if you want to dig deeper, I've spoken about this a few times uh, and also with the excellent Adrian Estrada of uh, NodeSource. Uh, there's a keynote uh, that we did at an OpenJS event uh, when we used to do them in person. Hopefully we'll be doing that again at some point in the future. Um, and a couple of others there. There's also a really great uh, blog post um, uh, by someone who, who took the training and the exam and they write, uh, um, uh, they write up about their experience. So check that out. Um, it's, it's very good. One other point, I don't, uh, the retake is free. So if, if you, for any reason, uh, fail the first time, you have a free retake uh, for the uh, services and uh, application developer exams. Um, I've already mentioned this, but um, I think uh, for a limited time, uh, there's a, a discount of 50% uh, for uh, the training material and the certification material. And you should have an email in your inbox about that if it's the 2nd of June or after, uh, as you watch this. A couple of links uh, from the stuff that we've talked about. And thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'll be on um, a Slack channel. I think it will be announced somewhere. Cheers.